everyone, my name is Glenn Bartley and welcome to another YouTube video. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the new Canon R7. Now this is an exciting camera, especially for bird photographers like me, because a lot of us have been waiting for sort of a crop body mirrorless camera that gives us that extra reach and still has a lot of megapixels. Um, if, you, if you're familiar with my photography, you know that I pretty much only photograph birds and most of the time I'm out in the field trying to photograph these difficult to find hard little birds in the neotropics and it's really helpful to have that extra reach that a crop body provides. So finally we've got one here from Canon, but we need to find out can this camera actually perform? It's got some nice specs on paper, it looks pretty good, but how does it stack up, especially when it comes to ISO performance, because that's a real concern. You know, look where I am right now. I'm in the temperate rainforest. It's a dark, cloudy morning. If I wanted to be photographing birds right now, I'd probably be having to use some higher ISOs. So how does this camera perform up against the Canon R5 in crop mode, the 90D, and the 7D Mark II? That's what we're gonna find out today. We're gonna set up a little target over here, and we're gonna take some test shots all the way from ISO 800 up to ISO 12,800. And I'll provide those files for you. You can download them and make your own conclusions. That's what I'm trying to do here. I have no bias here. I, you know, there's nothing in it for me. I'm just trying to provide some information for you guys who are trying to decide how to spend your hard earned dollars and whether this is the right camera for you. Now, before I get on with the test, I just wanna say a quick thank you to Camera Canada who provided the camera for me in order to do these tests. So thank you so much to my friends over at Camera Canada. If you're in Canada and you're looking for a new camera purchase, you might wanna check those guys out. So with that said, I'm gonna go set up my little target and let's get on with the test. All right, we're ready to do our testing. Just wanted to quickly say, I think it's really important when you're testing the ISO of a camera that you actually do it in appropriate conditions. So for example, sometimes I see these ISO tests that are shot in a studio with this crazy studio lighting, everything is incredibly bright and they're testing these cameras at ISO 12,800 or whatever. But why would you ever shoot at ISO 12,800 if, if you were getting a 2,000th of a second shutter speed? You wouldn't, you would drop your ISO. Of course you would, you want a better quality image. So right now when I'm shooting, I'm getting at ISO 800 like a quarter of a second. Extremely dark, real world scenario. If you were actually out photographing birds, if you actually needed those high ISOs, how would that translate? All those photons coming in, or actually not that many photons coming in because it's so dark. And I really think that's important when you're doing ISO tests. And a lot of the ones that I see when people on YouTube or whatever, I just don't think they're super valid the way that they're doing their testing, shooting in the middle of the day out in a bright sunny day and saying, oh look, ISO 12,800 looks great. Well, does it when you go into the dark rainforest? Let's find out. I got all my cameras lined up here. We're gonna do our test shots and then we're gonna head back to the computer to take a look at the results. All right, so we've got our little target out there. Now let's get to shooting. All right, my little buddy, the owl, performed well. He sat there nice and still, allowed us to get our test shots. So I think we're ready to head back to the computer and check out the results. I'll probably be doing a few more videos about the R7 on my channel here, but we're definitely gonna do a full episode of the Bird Photography Show dedicated to the R7. So be sure, if you're not already subscribed, and I'm sure you are, to Jan Wagner's channel, be sure to subscribe to that. And we will do a full episode in the next few weeks where we can both share our experiences with the camera, you know, what we found, what we liked, what we didn't like, and maybe that will help you to make a good decision whether it's the right camera for you. So thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna head back to the computer and I'll provide those files for you down below here in the description. Obviously be sure to subscribe to my channel and newsletter and all that stuff, and we'll see you in another video real soon. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're back in the office now. We can take a look at some of these files now and see if if we get any good results here, let's see how the R7 performs against the 90D and the 7D2 and the R5. We're gonna go into Adobe Camera Raw, open up all these different sequences and check them out. Okay, so let's get some files opened up here. Maybe we'll start with sort of fairly challenging scenario. Let's go to ISO 6400. And I'm just gonna open all these up in Adobe Camera Raw because we do need to look at the raw files um, I could have opened them up in Breeze browser, but then you're looking at an extracted JPEG, which is probably not what we want. Um, so we've got our four cameras here and I'll just maybe move the files around so that they're all kind of somewhat in the same area. That looks pretty good. And of course, what we're going to see right away is that, you know, two of two of the files are much larger and two of them are much smaller. 
the resolution of the 90D and of the R7 is much closer, and the resolution of the 7D Mark II and the, and the R5 in crop mode is much similar. So that's why we're seeing that. Now, obviously, like I said, I'm not going to draw the conclusions here. You guys can download the files and check them out for yourselves. But when I look, one of the things you notice definitely the R5 file looks a lot better than the 7D2 file just from every aspect like the subject was more in focus the noise is definitely present um, in Adobe Camera Raw. Adobe is not doing a great job handling the noise of Canon files and as you know I'm a big fan of using DxO Pure Raw first and then as part of my normal workflow that I teach in my post-processing ebook um, about how to use other programs like Topaz Denoise AI to get a really great result. And maybe we'll look at what Topaz can do on these files in a second. But that's not what we're talking about right now. What we're talking about right now is comparing the ISO. So let's take a look at the 90D, which is approximately 30 megapixels. So this is the 90D at ISO 6400. And then this is the R7. To my eye, they look quite similar. And if I had to give the edge to one of them, I would give it to the R7. It looks a, the noise structure looks a little bit more consistent and more kind of even, which even though there's noise there, it makes it a lot easier for the noise reduction programs to deal with. So, and then if we compare, it's a little bit harder to compare the R5 to the R7 because obviously, like I said, it's it's the subject is much smaller. I do think that the R5 noise looks a bit better. Um, but obviously you've got a lot less megapixels. We've got 17.3 megapixels versus 32. So given how much more megapixels the R7 has, I think it's actually holding up quite well here at ISO 6400. Why don't we take a look at another sequence here? I will go to, let's do 12,800, why not? We'll open those up and by the way, I've normalized all the ISO and everything, or the, sorry, the white balance and everything so that we're looking at them all, um, you know, hopefully as similar as possible, just being able to compare noise. And I think we'll do the same thing again, because really you guys can play around with these when you're at your own computers, but I'll just try to make them kind of similar size here. Now 72 ISO 12,800, definitely looking pretty noisy. It also look not only in the background, but in the actual subject, like in these darker blacks and stuff like that. So this is the 90D. And then now let's jump to the R7. Look at the detail in the blacks here. It looks a lot better on the R7, doesn't it? Look at the 90D, look at all that noise in there. And now look at the R7, much better in my opinion. And if we go to the R5, we have even better, I would say, detail in the darker areas. What about in the background? How does the R5 compare to the R7? Again, it's hard because the file is so much larger, but I think again, we see that the R5 noise is probably a little bit better, definitely better now that I see it. It's definitely a bit cleaner of a file, but I'm pleasantly surprised, I would say, or not necessarily surprised, but I'm, I'm at least happy to see that the R7 file does look significantly, in my opinion, better than the 90D. So it's not like they just chucked the 90D sensor in this body. It does look quite a bit cleaner. And, you know, obviously the set, the old 7D2, you know, doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look too great compared to the R5, for example. Um, and it's, it is difficult to compare when you're looking at these much larger files, but what I would say, my initial conclusions, and as I said, you can make your own conclusions. What I would say is that the R7 files definitely look better than the 90D files at higher ISOs. And what I think we should do now is have a quick look because we, these days, processing higher ISO files, it's not just about using Adobe. I really recommend using DxO Pure Raw. You can find a link down in the description and also Topaz Denoise AI. So what if we go back, what if, let's say we go back to like our ISO 6400 file. Let's grab the R7 file. We'll open that up. I'll just quickly open it from Adobe Camera Raw into Photoshop. 
And let's just see what happens if we open up Topaz Denoise AI and see what it can do with this kind of noise. So it's just doing its little preview here. We see all the noise and here we go. What is it going to do? Boom. Look at, look at that reduction of noise. Now, I would not normally run Topaz Denoise first. I would have put this through DxO Pure Raw, and that would have probably, we don't know yet because DxO Pure Raw doesn't support the R7 yet, but based on how well it works on the R5 files, I think that if you were to use DxO Pure Raw on the R7 files and then run them through sort of my normal workflow that I teach, I think you could actually get pretty clean really decent results. I mean, the subject is su just look at the owl, forget the background for a second. Can, given that this is ISO 6400, it's doing a pretty, you know, reasonable job there. Look at the red, especially like down in this area and look at how much noise there is before. And then it's sort of, it's really cleaning that up in this file. Um, looking around the eye here and before and after. So overall, I would say I'm pretty actually pleasantly um, surprised, let's say, that the R7 is holding its own in this regard. Um, definitely looking better than the 90D, which is good. So at least we have an improvement. We have this similar megapixel sensor, but we've got an improvement in ISO performance. And it'll be great to see once DxO Pure Raw supports the R7, what you can really pull out of these files. Well, everyone, I guess that just about wraps it up for this video. I hope you found this useful. Hopefully, hopefully it'll help you to decide whether the R7 is the right camera for you or not. Um, I'm going to do some more testing and whatnot. And like I said, pretty soon, Yan and I are going to have a full episode of the Bird Photography Show dedicated to the R7. So do, if you're interested in this camera, make sure you stay tuned for that. But for now, I'm going to get back to photo editing. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.